Hi, I'm George and welcome to part 33 of the Horizon series. This week we're going to have a look at the parachute deployment mechanism for the booster. Uh, now there's going to be two of these, uh, one on each of two of the segments and then a third segment is probably going to have batteries and a couple of cameras, one pointing up and one pointing down. Uh, each of these will be controlled independently uh, just for redundancy and we're also going to have a look at a flight test uh, that we flew this on an older rocket uh, just to see what, how cleanly the parachute comes out, how quickly the parachute opens uh, and also what sort of g-forces are applied on the rocket when that happens. So anyway, let's go have a look. To build the prototype, we start with the nose cone. We 3D printed a thin walled nose cone without any infill. This gives us the right shape, but it's not strong enough, especially during landing. So we reinforce it with fiberglass. We add three layers of the 85 GSM cloth. Can you tell we're a fan of this cloth since we use it everywhere? The nice thing is that it conforms really well to curved objects. We also add a few layers over the tip. The next day when it's cured, we give it a bit of a sand. Because this is only a prototype, that's good enough for now. Next we need to make the payload bay tube. Since this doesn't need a lot of strength, fiberglass is good enough. Here we're doing 5 wraps of 200 GSM cloth with another single wrap of the 85 GSM cloth on top of that. The next day we pull it off the mandrel. and trim the ends of it. We'll shorten it later once we know exactly the length that we need. We're using a Dremel to cut out the hole for the parachute. The edges need to be sanded smooth so that the parachute doesn't catch on anything. We made the door from a piece of old test pressure chamber of the same diameter that we didn't need anymore. It doesn't need to be made from carbon fiber, it's just what we had on hand. We've attached the door here with some really strong Gorilla Tape, but in the final design this will be replaced with something else. Perhaps ripstop nylon glued to both? Um, if you have any good ideas for the hinge, please let us know in the comments below. The deployment mechanism consists of a piece of 5mm Cori flute with a servo motor attached to one side and the timer on the other side. We 3D printed uh, end caps uh, with slots for the Cori flute. And we attached a battery and a switch to one of them. And this is how they go together. The final version is likely to be all 3D printed for better use of space. The ejection plate is again made from Cori flute, and here we're using four rubber bands. In the final version, this ejector plate is also likely to be 3D printed. For this test, we just put the rubber bands over the top of the deployment mechanism. In the final 3D printed one, there'll be specific mounting points for the rubber bands. We leave a gap at the bottom of the door to allow space for the shock cord that runs down the side of the rocket. The deployment mechanism then slides into the payload bay tube. Here's an access hole to the servo motor horn, and on the other side we have access hole to the power switch, as well as the servo timer. And the nose cone fits on here like this. We've drilled and tapped a number of holes in the 3D printed parts which allow the payload bay tube to be attached to these. We're using regular screws, but in the final version these will be countersunk. We're going to be testing this prototype on one of our older rockets, the Polaron G2, that is similar in size to one of the booster segments. In order to mount the mechanism on top, we epoxied a PVC ring to the top of the pressure chamber. The mechanism then just slides onto the ring like this and then gets screwed down as well. Here's the procedure we use to fold these new parachutes to fit into the narrow deployment mechanism. We first gather up all of the shroud lines together and then we clamp them. This procedure is a little different to our normal one because this parachute also has that central reefing line. We first go through each of the gores and roughly folding them in half. This helps get all of the major folds out of the parachute. Then we go back through all of the gores again, making sure that the top and bottom of each gore is folded properly. We then go back through half of the gore so that they are spread out like this. We can then start folding the parachute like this. 
For this particular deployment mechanism, five of the folds is the correct length. We then flip it over and remove the clip. The shroud lines then get folded into the parachute. We would normally put them in one big fold inside of the chute, but we want the parachute to open quickly, so this way the shroud lines can be pulled out completely as soon as the parachute comes out, without needing for the entire parachute to unfold first. We then fold up the sides and make a little burrito out of the chute like this. We put a rubber band on the parachute like this, uh, and then we have to remember to take it off before an actual flight. We added an extra rubber band on the outside to make sure that the door springs out cleanly. We may need to rethink this for the final version. Time to give it a quick bench stop test. The parachute gets packed, and a second rubber band hooks onto the servo horn. In the final version, we'll use a more secure latch. We'll also use stronger rubber bands to eject the parachute with more force. Along for the ride is also Daniel's rocket flight computer to measure altitude and acceleration forces. It's not used for parachute deployment in this test, but it will be used on the final booster. Here it's located about halfway down the rocket. Okay, time to test fly the mechanism. We're at the Mullaly launch site for this, and the conditions are absolutely ideal. Low wind and blue skies. This rocket is made from 2 litre bottles, reinforced with fiberglass. We're also testing out how the shock cord will be attached to the booster. Because we want the booster to be suspended sideways for maximum drag, we need to run the shock cord almost the full length of the rocket. The parachute and shock cord get packed into the deployment mechanism next. You can see we've added a small wind deflector just above the door, so that the airflow doesn't attempt to open the door. This will be slightly different on the final version. We attach the shock cord lightly with a piece of masking tape to keep it pinned to the rocket during flight. During deployment this will rip away. The rocket gets filled with 3.8 litres of plain water. We found the easiest way to get the rocket onto the launch tube is to do it on the table. This rocket uses a 16mm nozzle. We can then carry the whole rocket and launch it to the launch pad. Okay, so let's launch it. Okay. We're pressurizing here to 210 psi. Three, two, one, go. And here's the launch from a couple of different angles. One, go! Yeah. Parachute now would be good. Let's have a look at the data. We can see that the peak altitude was around 213 meters or 698 feet and the maximum acceleration during boost was about 12G. In the acceleration data you can also see where the parachute fully opened. In the raw altitude data we can see the ejection event. We can now measure how long it took to fully inflate the canopy from the time the chute was ejected. And we can see that was around 2.3 seconds. In that time the rocket descended about 21 meters or 70 feet. The overall descent rate was about 3.2 meters per second, and it looked nice and stable under parachute too. The rocket landed perhaps 300 meters away from the launch pad, but because of the very large chute, it proceeded to get dragged almost a kilometer along the ground. I didn't get footage of this, as I was busy chasing it. It finally got stopped by a barbed wire fence next to the road. What was the altitude? Mm -hmm. 
So despite the long drag along the ground, the parachute mechanism did really well. Uh, the parachute ejected cleanly and the packing procedure for the parachute also allowed it to open quickly, which was good. Um, now, when we actually build the real mechanism, we're going to subject it to some really harsh treatment with a power washer. We want to make sure that a jet of water is not going to try and activate it or damage something. Because when the rocket stages, there's going to be a really strong blast of water that's going to hit the top of these nose cones. So we just want to make sure that's safe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Three, two, one, go! Parachute now would be good.